Hey everybody, Lance Goyke here. Today we're going to discuss different rowing tempos. So tempo is just the speed at which you're doing your lifts. Um, I wanna outline three right now. So if we're thinking, uh, I'll just run through them. So slow and controlled with pausing, a normal speed, and then kind of an over speed. Okay, so first, slow and controlled, I am bending over, I'm getting my row, I'm holding it, and then I'm coming back down really slowly. Maybe I row up a little bit faster, then I am letting my arms fall down, and then I'm lowering. And so the pause is really good because it demands that you own this position, right? So I need to be able to tell my body to turn on these upper back muscles, the trapezius, the rhomboids, I need to be able to stabilize my shoulder blade position there if I'm going to uh, hang on to that position. Um, I like, uh, you know, most of my people, if you watch a session, most of my people are either gonna go slow with pausing or gonna go slow without pausing because sometimes uh, it's just easier as a coach to teach you that way. Not sometimes, pretty much every time. Sometimes I just make you hold a position, right? You're just holding that rowing position to sit there and get a sense for what it feels like to get your shoulder blade back. Okay, so those are those are two kind of options, but the biggest reason that I'm using this slow rowing position is generally just for teaching purposes. I could also use it for some sort of um, like uh, physiology pur purposes. If I keep that slow motion, and maybe if I'm not pausing, but I just keep moving really slowly, I can use that to stress the uh, to kind of just like disregard the muscles that fatigue and really stress the fatigue resistant muscles. Okay, so I'm, I'm teaching my muscles to have more blood vessels and to have better endurance. Um, okay, so that's number one, really slow stuff. The normal speed is kind of normally what I'm doing and kind of normally what I'm having everybody else do. Um, it's, I'm a little bit slower on the way down, but general speed here. So like one count up, two counts lowering, no pausing at any point. Uh, the only time I'll introduce pausing here is if you're shortening up some part of the movement too much. Like if you're not letting your arms stretch out all the way at the bottom, then yeah, I might say reach a little bit more and then row. Okay, good. Uh, and you know, you can throw in pausing if you really want to be able to own that contraction. If you want to, like if you're, if you're really short on weight, maybe you're working out in your home and you only bought dumbbells up to 50 pounds and you're ready for a 60 pound dumbbell, then one, you can add more reps and that's fine for muscle building purposes. You're not really going to push yourself into the strength levels, but it's fine for muscle building purposes. And the other thing you can do is kill the stretch reflex. So when I stretch my muscle, it's really good at contracting back the other way. And what we can do is we can come down to the bottom and we can hold it there and let all that momentum dissipate and die. And then we can row again. We can initiate right from there. And you can kind of do the same thing at the top, kill the momentum and then let it come back down. So that's when I'm using pausing. That's my normal tempo. We've already talked about the slow tempo. And now the other one I want to mention is a fast tempo. So this is where you see people <laughs> kind of like writhing in pain, uh, almost almost convulsing, you know? Uh, if I'm doing a row and my hand's on the bench, oftentimes you're going to see a lot of rotating. Um, you're going to see just shortened ranges of motion. It's going to kind of look like the weight is too much. Um, now, eh, I'm, I kind of prime it that way when I say that the weight is too much. I don't really mean that it's necessarily too much, but usually it looks like it is. Uh, you can use this as a way to kind of force reps out. So um, Matt Kroksaleski in kind of invented this croc row thing where I just pick the heaviest freaking dumbbell in the gym. Maybe that's just because he had a lot of muscle uh, and was really strong. But I, I take this row and I kind of shorten the motion and I'm just speeding through this thing. Um, it, it's a good idea 
if you want to force some extra reps out. So maybe I'll let you do this and maybe I'll use this in my own training after I do my normal speed reps and then I start to get really tired and I notice that I can't row up quite as high, then I'll start to just jump it up and I'll use a little bit more momentum from my legs or I'll use a little bit of that body English so that I can start to really uh, force the muscles involved in this row into uh, excessively fatigued states because that's what's going to drive my muscle growth, right? That and your diet, obviously. So that's some talk about rowing tempos. Sometimes you can go slow, especially if you need to figure something out. Normally, you're going to go about two counts down, one count up. And then sometimes if you want to force some reps in, pick up the pace a little bit.